Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. I thought for a bit of a change today I'll bring you out to the greenhouse as I'm just in here checking over some of the animals that live in here as they start to wind down towards their winter rest period. So I'll show you some of the animals that live in the greenhouse and then we'll go on into the outhouse as well and give you a bit of an update on what's going on with the newts and salamanders. So this is where the adult common frogs live. There's various colour morphs in here. This one is a flavistic individual. You could easily think it was albino actually as you look at the eyes there. You can see they're a kind of pinky colour, similar to an albino. But these animals lay dark eggs, whereas albinos lay white eggs. So I believe this is a type of leucistic. Um, but leucistics are normally white in colour. So these are referred to as flavistic, which means yellow rather than white. You can see a normal animal there. That one is uh, heterozygous for albinism. It's carrying the albino gene. And another flavistic there. Uh, this animal it actually had a blister recently um, and it lost a little bit of weight. It's recovered now, um, but I'm, at this time of year it's quite important to just check on animals like this and make sure they are putting on enough weight. And this one's getting a little bit of special treatment, a few extra worms and things um, before they stop feeding for the winter period. This is a nice big fat one. Uh, this is Goldie, golden albino. Uh, this is a female. The females will always be fatter than the, than the males. This is a male, this flavistic. Uh, this is a female. Uh, this is another female. The, the females are full of spawn at this time of year. A lot of people don't realize that uh, common frogs produce the spawn in late summer within their body and they hold it there until the springtime when they're ready to breed. So at this time of year, um, you can see that a, a female is going to be very fat. This is all spawn in a belly, ready for breeding in the springtime. And this is a different colour morph, which I believe is tyrosinase positive albinism, T positive albinism. They have a little bit more pattern than the golden albinos and the other albino variants. Reddish eyes again, ruby red eyes really. I've only, I've only ever bred these from heterozygous animals. That's normal coloured animals that carry the gene. Um, and heterozygous animals always laid normal looking dark eggs. So it won't be until I breed from a homozygous a visual uh, T positive albino that can prove them out as we say and, and see whether they do produce white eggs which will prove that it's definitely a type of albinism rather than a leucistic or anything like that. And this is a green toad. We don't often see these in the day. There's quite a few more animals living in here. There are fire salamanders in here. Um, it's very important for the winter time that they've got places they can get underground. And if you look here you can see this is a burrow fire salamanders live in so you can get they can get right underground there and when i designed this greenhouse i designed it with underground compartments that the animals can get into um, to to protect them from the cold weather in the winter and from the sun in the summer as well there's actually mesh in a lot of the roof of this greenhouse so it doesn't overheat we're also um, shaded by a large oak tree, so overhanging as well. So it doesn't get particularly hot, but the animals have got that option of getting underground. If it's extremely hot or extremely cold, they can avoid any extremes of temperature. There's a little Iberian water frog there, Pelophylax perizzi. And here's what I call a pink albino. You see, photos can be quite deceiving sometimes because looking at it there on screen, it looks like it has dark eyes, but that's because the sun's not shining on its eyes there. And in sunlight, these do have very sort of dark ruby red eyes on this type of albino. Now, also dotted around the greenhouse, I have piles of logs that the animals can get under. There's actually, again, there's holes dug in there that the animals can get underground under the log pile. I will also, over the next week or so, I'll cover these over with a layer of 
uh, deciduous leaves as well, oak leaves, beech leaves, something like that, to give them extra um, insulation for the winter. And the animals can stay in here then all year round. I have a few colour moths in my collection of various species. These two are both Italian crested newts, Tritosaurus carnifex. This black one is a melanoid. The melanoids are, are very dark in colour. They have jet black eyes due to the lack of iridophores, which are the shiny pigment that they have in the skin and their eyes. And they also have a lack of spots on the belly. Of course, most crested newts have spotted bellies. And the paler one is a flavistic Italian crested newt. So this is a type of leucistic, similar to the uh, common frogs, where I mentioned uh, that the flavistic is basically a yellowy coloured leucistic. I made a video a while ago called How to Breed Colour Morphs. And if you look back at that video, you'll see that I discussed the possibility of breeding together the melanoid and flavistic Italian crested newts. Well, I did exactly that two years ago, and this is the result. This, uh, this is the first generation from that pairing. And these animals are what we call double heterozygous. So they're carrying the genes for both the melanoid and the flavistic uh, morphs. But themselves, they are completely normal visually. They're what we call um, a normal phenotype. But their genotype is uh, heterozygous for melanoid and heterozygous for flavistic. So you breed these two animals together. And that's when you combine the genes and you can see the result. And this year I did that for the first time. And we can take a look at the result from that pairing now. So here are all four possible results from that pairing. Statistically, uh, from a double heterozygous pairing, you get 56% that are normal in appearance, but have the chance of carrying uh, both genes. You get, let me get this right, 19% of each more. So 19% um, flavistic, 19% melanoid, like that animal there. And you get... 6%, I think that should have got to 100, 6% that display both genes in combination. So that's what we see here. This is a melanoid flavistic. And another one, another one there. This is a flavistic at the front and a melanoid flavistic behind it. Um, so the difference, essentially, you can see there is a difference in coloration, but also... The melanoid flavistic, as well as having the flavistic type coloration, it has very dark eyes. It has the melanoid eyes. Well, there we go. We've got them right together. If I can focus. So, yeah, jet black eyes on the melanoid flavistic. And quite a distinct lack of pattern as well compared to the flavistic. Um, the flavistic does have kind of faint grey spots. So these are just very... Uh, plain yellowy, not much pattern at all. I also have some new fire salamanders. These are Sierra Morena fire salamanders. Salamandra salamandra morenica from southern Spain. I just have one pair of these, one um, sub-adult, like young adult pair. In here we have Salamandra corsica, the Corsican fire salamander. There's six little juveniles in here. They've got a lovely orangey colour. I don't know if they'll keep that as they mature. They're normally more yellow.
Some of the other fire salamanders, like these terrestrials, have been seen mating recently now that the autumn's here. That's their main period of activity, really, once the, the autumn comes. That's the nice red female. Hopefully she produces some young this year. Uh, the Bernadesi have been seen mating recently as well. And as always, there's lots more things in the pipeline. These are het albino common toads. So hopefully in another couple of years time, um, we'll be producing albino common toads, which don't really seem to exist in the hobby at the moment. So yeah, there's always lots of um, exciting things coming up. Keep an eye on the channel. Uh, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.